Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to show you the best NuGet package that you probably don't know about but it is used in so many other libraries that you are using that it has 350 million downloads in NuGet but I can guarantee that for those downloads most of you will not know about it. It is very useful, it's very interesting, especially one of the aspects that we're going to focus on. So let's go straight into the video. If you like the type of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe or ring the notification bell and for more training, check out nickchapsas.com. Now, I just want to take a moment before the video for a quick announcement. I started making these videos three years ago, and three years later, the channel has grown beyond any of my expectations. Now I'm at a point where the channel is sustainable and I can do this full time thanks to you watching the videos and buying my courses. To celebrate this milestone, I'm offering the first 200 of you a 20% discount code on nickchapsas.com on any of my courses except for the bundle. So if you're waiting for a discount to grab a course, this is the time. And I increase it from 100 to 200 just because of how important this milestone is for me. So use discount code full time and the first 200 of you will get a 20% discount. Again, thank you so, so much. I couldn't have done this without you. Now back to the video. All right, so before I just show you the NuGet package first, I want to show you one of the problems that this package is solving, which is probably the most common one that you will be dealing with. And then I'm going to explain the second one, which is probably more for library creators. So I have a simple API here. We have a controller. We inject a weather service and it's on the weather endpoint. And then in that weather service, we grab the weather. I have an artificial uh, synchronous delay. By the way, if this was asynchronous, then you should be using uh, task.delay, not thread.sleep. Uh, but for what we're doing here, it's fine. We just want to simulate an API call to a different service. And what I want to do is show you something that I've talked about before. Let's say I wanted to decorate this service to also have some logging, but outside of this method call over here or maybe I want to measure how long this call takes and then log it so I can use it later when I analyze my logs. Well, you can do all this manually, but if you're using the built-in DI container, what you can do is you can go ahead and use the Scrutor NuGet package and install that over here. I have a dedicated video to Scrutor if you're interested where I go very in-depth, uh, but I can just do that and then all I need to do is create a measured weather service, which Again, implements iWeather service and then implementing the missing members. And then the important thing is that I am injecting the iWeather service, which will, will be um, the actual one, the real one. And then I'm also injecting whatever else I want. So I logger of type um, measured weather service. Here we go. And then all I need to do here is say try and return from that weather service over here. So get forecast, whatever. I'm actually outside of this. We'll also start a stopwatch. So I'm going to say stopwatch.start new. And then on a finally block, so I can measure it at the very end, I can say stopwatch.stop. Here we go. Uh, and then I'm just going to say logger.log information uh, and capture that and say method name took duration and then milliseconds. So it would be name of that method name and then stopwatch dot elapsed milliseconds. And that's it. And once I do that, I can go back here and I can say builder services dot decorate, which is what Scrutter will add. And I'm going to say I weather service and then measured weather service. And once I do that, I can go ahead and run this project, go to at postman over here and as you can see the call is done and if i go back get forecast took 21 milliseconds just for that call so this is a nice way to decorate a method if you don't want to have that logic inside your main uh, weather service because it just doesn't make sense to have it there but then the problem becomes that when i add an extra method to the iweather service so let's say for example i have an overload that accepts how far in the forecast i can go then i have to also add it in the measured weather service and I have to also deal with it here. And then, of course, I need to do it in the main class as well. But my point is, every time you add a new method or every time you have a new interface and class combo, you have to redecorate and redo all of this manually. But it doesn't really scale. So how can we get around this? Well, I'm going to completely remove this measured weather service that I just created. And I'm going to add a NuGet package. The NuGet package in question is castle.core and what we're going to use in that package used to be in a separate package called castle.dynamicproxy I think but now it is merged into core and castle.core is used by every single mocking framework 
out there really except for the source generated ones and I'm going to explain why when we go later in this example folder over here but for now let's see what it can do for us so first I'm going to just delete that so there is no decoration anymore now how can we do this in a way where we don't tailor it exactly to that specific service and we can reuse it everywhere well let me show you the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create what's called an interceptor, which will intercept those method calls. So I'm going to create a folder called interceptors and I'm going to create a new uh, duration interceptor. And then what this needs to do is implement the I interceptor interface and then implement the missing members. And you can think of an interceptor effectively as middleware. It has this invocation uh, interface and then you have the proceed method which passes the call down to the real method so anything here is before actual method call and anything after here is after actual method call but if you never call this method you can short circuit the call as well if you want an exit early from the interceptor let's wire everything up together and see how we would get the same effect as before by doing this so obviously the first thing I need as before is the try finally block because if we do the same thing we have to be fair. So here we go and then I have the stopwatch. So stopwatch dot start new goes here and then in the finally block we are uh, logging. So I'm going to inject the private read only I logger and I'm just going to use the interceptor here and say interceptor. By the way, if you want to get the code for this, become a Patreon. We also have a Patreon Discord server now where we can chat about the videos and new courses and everything. So check it out in the description. Uh, but now I have the logger and all I can say is stopwatch.stop over here and then logger.log information. And this invocation class actually has quite a few interesting things. First, let me have the template. So method name took duration in milliseconds to get the method name of that call all i need to do is say invocation dot method dot name some of you might be thinking about performance right now looking at things like method info we're gonna see in this video how performance is affected here so don't think about it too much think about the benefit of the feature first so i have that and then i have the elapsed milliseconds and that's it so what's going to happen is the exact thing as before you don't really need to return anything the return uh, value is actually a parameter which you can set but we won't really do that because all we want is to pass it down to weather service and now how do we wire this thing up well all i need to do is actually remove this and say builder.services.add intercepted singleton so i have an i weather service the actual weather service and then the duration interceptor now this extension method is an extension method that i wrote it's not part of the actual package but the code is here you can grab it if you want from the screen or the description it just makes it so so easy to intercept implementations using di so you can resolve things from the interceptor itself through di as you would do in any application and that's it. I can just run this and I can go back to um, Postman. And as you can see, I'm intercepting those calls and I'm capturing how long they take. And the kicker is that I can add any combination of interfaces. Let's say I have just, just a dummy one. Let's say I user repository. Um, and that should be, of course, an interface. Um, and then I do the same with a class. So if that implements I user repository, um, there's nothing specific in the interceptor to that class. So I can simply say builder.services.add intercepted singleton, I user repository, user repository, and then duration interceptor again. And because I'm using in my extension method, the try add transient, it won't be registered multiple times. So this is built to be safe to call as many times as you want. And if I do that, then any method in the user repository will be intercepted as well. So it's a very nice and elegant way to create interceptors for your methods and then have all those cross-cutting concerns in interceptors instead of having them in the class itself. I think this is very, very cool in my opinion. And like I mentioned before in the video, this is actually the library behind any mocking library. Mock uses it and substitute uses it, fake it easy uses it. And why do they use it? Well, let's close all that and go to this example over here. And I'm going to delete that. And I have uh, added castle over here, castle core goes here. Uh, and by the way, like with any open source video, 
The link is in the description. Give them a star on GitHub. It's a very, very cool library. Um, and all I need first is the proxy generator over here. So I'm going to have a new proxy generator, which is what creates those proxies. Um, and I'm going to also add the I user repository interface, uh, which I selected as a class again, which let's say um, has something like this. We have a record of a user where we have string full name, and then this returns a Boolean, so true or false, create if the user was created, right? But I'm not going to have an implementation here. All I'm going to have is the interface. But imagine that there could be an implementation that uses some form of database. Now, why I'm showing you this? Well, I'm showing you this because what I can do is I can create a proxy implementation during runtime using the proxy generator and then make my own interceptor that never actually calls a real implementation. And what does that do? Well, it allows me to basically mock. How does it do that? Well, let's go back here and create this public class fake interceptor and have the I interceptor over here and implement the intercept method. Now, in the invocation object, I have the arguments of the method, all the method info, the proxy object itself. I have generic arguments. I have everything about the method call. I can also set the arguments and the, their values. I can get them as well. And I can also set the return type, meaning that if I could grab all the arguments on specific arguments, I can return specific values, which is basically how mocking frameworks work. So if I say, for example, return value here and not care about anything else, and then I go back to the program.cs and say proxy generator dot create proxy without target, then I can say I use a repository here and I can have a new fake interceptor. And then this will give me the proxy. So the proxy call is the create method of the user. So user is Nick Chapsus. And again, remember, there is nothing in that interface. And I'm going to actually just be explicit so you can see what's happening here. There is nothing in that interface that has an implementation. So I'm just going to do console.writeline result, right? So remember, just an interface, no implementation, just a user, just an interceptor that sets the return value, which is, by the way, um, this Boolean over here. Then I go back here. I should have everything. So all I need to do is debug this, maybe stick a breakpoint too. So I grab the proxy generator. Here we go. It creates the proxy. And as you can see, the name of the object is I user repository proxy. This is a runtime object generated by Castle. And then if I call that method, it returns true. Why does it return true? Well, let's debug again and actually also debug in the interceptor. So I'm going to step into this call. And as you're going to see here, it goes in the intercept method before. And because I never call proceed, it never goes to an implementation. So it proxies it, it intercepts it. And that's how effectively mocking frameworks work. And if you have a big imagination, you can do so much cool stuff with this. But I know what you're probably thinking, Nick, performance. This is dealing with method info objects, with arguments, with like what is happening here? How performant is this? Well, I happen to have this performance project over here. And what I have is the same weather forecast service example as before, without the delay, of course. And then I have the decorated version, which, by the way, I'm using manually, not with Scrutter. So it's in its most raw form, which is basically best case scenario. And I also have a fake interceptor. So in both cases, we don't really do anything. We just pass the call down to the weather service. And then I've written this benchmark, which creates the interceptor, which, by the way, doesn't need to be over there. It can be local. And then it grabs the intercepted service and the decorated service. And there's a benchmark to compare the two. So what I'm going to do is change this to release mode, select the performance project and run them and see how they compare performance wise. Again, one is using a decorated service, which is the one you have to change every single time manually. And the other one is using the intercepted service using castle.core. OK, results are back. And as you can see, the decorated version is actually slower than the intercepted one. Of course, it's more memory efficient, um, again, in the context of some bytes, uh, but it is slower. Now, 
I would not have expected this to be slower because in previous examples it was a little bit faster. So I'm going to run it again, but I think what's happening here is because we're dealing with low nanoseconds, there's a bit of margin of error here. So I'm just going to run it again to give you a better representation of both points. Uh, but as you can see, you won't really lose much speed by using this. And yes, if you have to be as memory efficient as humanly possible, then maybe you don't want to use this. But for 99.999% of the project out there, I think this is going to be a fine use case. Now, like with anything performance related out there, my advice is that because performance is contextual, you have to measure for your use case and see if you can afford doing things like this. But I would be very confident that in most cases, this will be absolutely fine. Yes. And as you can see, this is the example that I was getting consistently. The compile time, the corrected one was slightly faster. And of course, the same uh, in memory efficiency as before, while the intercepted is a bit slower. So for me, nothing to worry about. The benefit I'm getting out of this far outweighs these performance concerns. Again, this is nanoseconds, not microseconds, not milliseconds. So we're absolutely good. Highly recommend you give it a star and check it in the description. Grab the code if you want. I think it's a brilliant, brilliant library that has potential outside of mocking frameworks. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making these videos possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video. Subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.